But uh, before anything else, I just want to know, I'm going to try to make this somewhat fun, even though I don't feel in a funny mood right now, but the bottom line is, let's start off with a tie. To anybody who may be watching on television, this is a Naval Academy tie. I wore this today, John, uh, to honor you and to annoy you all at the same time. <laughs> he would constantly tell me, Lindsay, I wish you were in my Naval Academy class. I said, well, that's very nice, John. You know why, Lindsay? I said, no, John. If you had been in my class, I'd been sixth from the bottom, not fifth. So thank you very much, John. Humili humiliation and affection were constant companions. The more he humiliated you, the more he liked you. And in that regard, I was well served. Um, to my colleagues, thank you again so much for what you have done. The only way I know to put this in words that maybe John can relate to, is that after a military operation is over, after a mission is complete, the pilots come back and debrief, or if there's a military operation, do an after-action report. And I thought to myself, what would it say? What would the after-action report for John McCain say? And the purpose of these reports is for lessons learned, so that others will benefit and make sure that we remember. Remember the things that went well and the things that did not, so we'll be better off as a unit, as a nation. The title of the operation was pretty easy. You can say a lot of things about me, but clever is not one of them. Operation Maverick. It began in the fall of 1954, the year before I was born, at the Naval Academy. And it ended the 25th of August, 2018. And what can we learn? The source of the report is me, his political wingman, codename Little Jerk. You've all got your names and you earned them like I did. Who was lucky enough to walk in his shadow and to witness history up close to be in the presence of a giant at a time everything around us was so small. What did I learn? That a few dumb jokes told over and over actually become funny and can take you a long way in politics, Marco. <laughs> I'm going to give them to you because John liked you. Uh, Lindsay, how hot is it in Arizona? John, I don't know. It is so hot that the trees chase the dogs. I said, well, isn't that funny, John? What's unique about Arizona? I said, I don't know, John. I imagine a lot of things. Barry Goldwater for ran for president, lost. Mo Udall ran for president, lost. I ran for president and lost. Lindsay, it's the only place in the nation when mothers tell their children, <clears throat> you can never grow up to be president. <laughs> Jeff, remember that. Maybe you can break the string. Uh, Lindsay, aren't you a lawyer? Yeah, I am, John. He says, you know the difference between a lawyer and a catfish? No, I don't. One's a bottom-dwelling, scum-sucking creature, and the other's a fish. No wonder we did so poorly with lawyers, John. You know why I didn't join the Marines, Lindsay? I said, no, my parents were married. I'm going to miss these dumb jokes. Uh... What else did I learn? I learned how to fight a lot. <laughs> Everything and everybody. I learned how to forgive. And from him, I saw how to heal. On the fighting side, I learned that the captured warrior who was tortured became the statesman who forgave and healed a relationship between his former adversary and our nation. I went to the Hanoi Hilton. It's one of the highlights of my life with a John. It's now a museum, and we're the bad guys because uh, they get to write how the museum reads. I remember being in front of his cell, and you can see the wheels turning and the memories coming back. And as we walked forward, 
surrounded by a bunch of handlers, and John McCain was Elvis in Vietnam. It was the most amazing thing in the world, how people adored him in Vietnam. I saw a bunch of photos on the wall of the prisoners playing volleyball, sitting in the sun with sunglasses on. I said, John, must have not been that bad after all. And he said, with a wry smile, I don't remember it this way, which allowed us to get out of Vietnam. I remember him embracing a war that nobody wanted to talk about because he understood what it would cost to lose it. I remember him supporting the surge when everybody was willing to get out of Iraq because they were so tired of it and saw no way forward. I remember the fighter. I remember the 2008 campaign when in 2007, John McCain was fifth in a four-person race. Written off as politically dead, no money, the Straight Talk Express had no wheels. Out of sheer determination, after a visit to Iraq, where General Petraeus allowed him to talk in July to 600 people who are going to re-enlist in a war that they did not have to continue to fight, and about equal number were becoming citizens because they were fighting for their country and had expedited citizenship. Two empty chairs in the front with boots, and John asked, what is that all about? Two didn't make it to the ceremony, but they were given their citizenship that day. I remember about 2,000 soldiers wanting a photo, and every one of them got it. I remember being so hot I couldn't breathe, but we stayed anyway. I remember coming back and getting the nomination only to lose. I remember that night very well. He had wanted to be president. He was prepared to be president, but it was not his to have. And I remember, above all else, the speech he gave that night. John taught us how to lose. When you go throughout the world, people remember his concession speech as much as anything else. There are so many countries where you can't afford to lose because they kill you. And John said that night, President Obama is now my president. So he healed the nation at a time he was hurt. I learned that serving a cause greater than yourself hurts. Anybody in the military can tell you the risk you take. He couldn't put his jacket on. He couldn't comb his hair. Because he got hurt serving a cause greater than himself. I remember how easy it is to say and how hard it is to do. How hard it is to tell your base, I think you're wrong. How hard it is to solve problems that nobody else wants to talk about. I learned that failure and success are the different sides of the same coin. That John told me I have become better for my failures because it teaches us. And I've been tempted by my success. And without my failures, I would have never been successful. So to those who are striving as a young person, remember John McCain. He failed a lot, but he never quit. And the reason we're talking about him today, and the reason I'm crying, is because he was successful in spite of his failures. For family and friends, the After Action Report would say, a relationship with Maverick brought joy and difficulty. Both were your constant companion. He was a difficult man. He could be tough. But the joy that you receive from being with him will sustain you for a lifetime. And I am so lucky to have been in his presence. He taught me that principle and compromise are not mutually exclusive and the foundation of a great person as well as a great nation. He taught me that immigration, as hard as it is to solve, somebody's got to do it. And he said to me with Ted Kennedy, you're going to learn, Lindsay, 
that the other side has to get something to. I have learned that lesson. To my friends on the other side, as long as I'm here, I'm going to remember that you have to get something to. He taught me that when good ignores evil, it may be convenient, but it seldom works. He talked about what would happen in Iraq if we left. He was right. He talked about what would happen in Syria if we didn't get involved. He was right. Why? Because warriors are the best, I believe, at making peace. And the warrior understands the difference between a false peace and real peace. To those who accused him of wanting endless wars, you had no idea what you were talking about. He wanted sustainable peace and understood the consequences of not seeing it through. The soldiers adored him. To those who have traveled with John, you seldom had two mills in the same country. You met more people than you could remember, but you were struck by one thing. We're going to really bad places a lot. And those in the military adore this man. He taught me that boldness and practicality must be practiced in equal measure. He believes in climate change, Sheldon. <laughs> and so do I. But there's a practical streak about John that I think made him very successful because he told me time and time again, you have to let people catch up with you. You have to have a rhythm and a pace. There are 100 people in this body from different walks of life. You may think you're right, and over time, if you are, it will be proven. But give the co your colleagues the time and the understanding to catch up with you. He taught me that honor and imperfection are always in competition. I do not cry for a perfect man. I cry for a man who had honor and always was willing to admit to his imperfection. If you're thinking about getting in politics, the one thing I would ask you to look at when it comes to the life of John McCain, that it's okay to tell people, I screwed up. I got this wrong. I want to make it right. Honor is, in my view, doing the right thing at your own expense. And he did that time and time and time again. He taught me that life without passion and love is a sad life. He had a happy life. He had ten lives. He was involved in five aviation action, accidents. If we sent John a bill for all the planes that crashed, he could never pay it off. He lived life to its fullest. He was often disappointed, but he was never deterred from getting back up and going at it again. Love. Not a word often associated with Senator McCain, but it should be. Because if you were loved by him, you knew it. You were loved with all your faults. And I was lucky to have been loved by him. So, how would I characterize Operation Maverick? Wildly successful. It made the world a better place. It gave the nation something to talk about at a time when we can't agree on anything. Not universal acceptance of the life of John McCain, but pretty damn close. The only time MSNBC, CNN, and Fox are saying the same thing. And the only way that happened is because those of us who had the pleasure of being in his presence 
and those who covered him in your business. Want to tell the story. I haven't been approached since his death by cab drivers, waiters, cops, and they said, sorry for your loss. My name is Graham, not McCain. But I feel like a McCain. I don't know if I've earned that honor, but I feel like it. The average man and woman in this country got John McCain. And what will it mean for the future? It means there will be generations of politicians coming along who will be influenced by him. The McCain Institute is alive and well. And its goal is to get young leaders throughout the developing world, expose them to, mock, to democracy, teach them the art of compromise, the rule of law, and what a legacy. John will inspire courage. He will reinforce the idea nothing is inevitable as long as a few people are willing to fight for what they believe is right. It is going to be a lonely journey for me for a while. I'm going to need your help. And the void to be filled by John's passing is more than I can do. Don't look to me to replace this man. Look to me to remember what he was all about and try to follow in his footsteps. If you want to help me, join the march. If you want to help the country, be more like John McCain. I believe there's a little John McCain in all of us. And the little of John McCain, practiced by a lot of people, can make this a really great nation. So, my friend, you did good. You lived in the shadow of a four-star father and a four-star grandfather. You always worried, would you disappoint? You did not. To Cindy and the children, thank you for making me part of the clan. To Team McCain, you taught me what loyalty is all about. To my colleagues, thank you for your kindness. I yield the floor.